All right, we are continuing with assignment two, our creature composite. So if we look at our agenda here, we see that today, September 25th, is when we have to turn something in for that. Even if it's just our sketch to acknowledge the deadline, you don't want to let today pass without posting something into the assignment in Canvas so that you can always resubmit for a higher grade. So we started the process by finding a guiding creature as inspiration, or it can be a combination of creatures. So I looked at some of the new Pokemon that have been designed. The reason I like to use them is because they always have very strong silhouettes. So that if you see them as just a black cutout, you can understand exactly what those, those creatures, how they move, uh, what their anatomy might be. And then we just do a quick sketch, understanding their joints, their rib cage, their spine, their cranium, their, their mandible, their legs, their knees, in order to, to know the positioning of the fantasy creature we're going to do. Then we decide what kind of reference to look up. We use Pixabay to find the best quality, high quality uh, reference. And then we start cutting those Pixabay images out and layering them on top of each other. Right. So you, we want to use at least five elements, but very often we do more than that. So I use the analogy of building a car. And the most important part of building a car is building the engine. So I brought in references first for what is the most important part of creature design, which is the head. And so for the head, I have four different components that now I want to start cleaning up. So I have kind of the base neck component. Bless you. And the first thing I want to do is layer them up and start playing with just rough cutouts and sizing them where I want them. So I have this crocodile kind of beak, and then I'm going to change the eye to this kind of owl eye. So now they're all layered up, but they're not matching in terms of color, right, or lighting. And the one I think I like as the guiding one is this one. So I might just clean this up really quickly. This is what I consider a lucky reference from Pixabay in that it's shot on just a blue sky. So that makes it really easy to check contiguous with the magic wand, have a tolerance of around 32, which is the default, to just click on that outside and then hit delete. But then if I really zoom in, you'll see that there's a little halo of blue pixels, right? So what next can I do? I can say select and mask. And it will remember what I used last time, which was a feather of 2.5 pixels and a radius of 5. It's going to grow my selection and smooth it out so that now when I hit delete, it's going to bite away at that edge. So it's more believable. Okay, so now I have a nice feathered cutout. Right. Okay, next, there's this thing. I'm not sure about the coloring of this thing yet. I could try cutting it out, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that because parts of it are going to be overlapped. So it just depends how, how hard it is to cut it out. So here, to get all these different greens, I'm using the magic wand with contiguous turned on at 32, and I'm holding down shift to add to it. Now the problem with that is I can start to, to lose content I might want to keep, like in here. So then what I can do is I can use my lasso tool, because you can use any of the selection tools all together, and I can hold down shift, and I can add to my selection. In this case, I'm actually going to hold down option and, just, and delete from it, because what I'm selecting is the stuff to erase. So that can save you a little bit of time. So this is kind of cleaning up your different parts of the engine before you weld them all together. Okay. 
And the easiest way to be accurate, I'm just using a mouse right now, but I also have my tablet. Easiest way to be accurate would be to, uh, to use my tablet for the stylus. With practice, you can be pretty precise. All right. I can also add to the selection by holding down shift, get these little breaks. So I'm just trying to get rid of this green because we want a creature design head to toe. All just cut out on a blank background because we're going to be putting that in. Okay, then I'm going to do select and mask. Actually, I'll go ahead and delete first just so you can see that process. So I'll cancel, delete. You see how the problem is with straight delete? It gives you a really, really hard edge. So I'm going to soften it by feathering. Go to select and mask, use my settings, and then hit delete a few times to soften that edge. I can turn off my sketch. And honestly, that might be too much softening. So I'm going to go back in my history. Maybe I only want three clears. There we go. And then Command-D to deselect. Now, if the sketch kind of gets in the way, I like to create a new layer on top of the sketch and then just fill that whole thing with middle gray. And then I can turn on my guides. Remember, this is the printable area that we have at the right resolution. So now I want this to feel like it matches this with the head. So to do that, I'm going to use adjustments. Image adjustments, start with levels. Play with the mid-tone sliders first, just like we did for our landscape. And I'm going to brighten it up quite a bit because there's a lot of strong light you know, hitting this reference, which I'm using as a guideline. Notice I'm not going to use the highlight slider because then it gets me to pure white pixels. I'm not going to use the shadow slider. It gets me to pure black. But I can push that mid-tone slider brighter or darker. And for this, I want it brighter. So that looks good. Next, I go to Image Adjustments, and I use Color Balance, and this is to get the color temperature the same. And I'm going to push the mid-tones, like a little bit more towards green, a little bit more towards cyan, maybe a little bit towards blue. There you go. And they're feeling like they're in the same realm now. I can play with the highlights as well, play with the shadows, but mid-tones is always a good place to start. So again, started like this, then I used levels, got to here, then I used color balance, got to here. And then if you need a real big shift, you go to um, image adjustments, hue saturation. And here I like to play with just the hue slider and see, do I want to warm it up or do I want to have it be more in the reds and purples? And I think I just want to warm it up a tiny bit, maybe even desaturate it a tiny bit. So now that's looking right, kind of fits with the creature's lighting. That green does not fit, but that green's not actually going to be in it. Okay, now, same thing with this crocodile head. What I'm going to do first is color correct it. So image adjustments, levels. Oh, got to be on the right layer. So image adjustment levels, always where I start. Play with the mid-tone slider. Decide if you want to brighten it or darken it. In this case, I want to brighten it. I might even want to limit the highlights a little bit. And limit the shadows just a little bit. Okay, now my favorite one, image adjustment color balance. There's a lot of yellow and green in this image. So I'm going to push the mid-tones away from the yellow and away from the green. Just a bit.
That looks better. Now let's play with the highlights. Put a little yellow back in and play with the shadows. Put a little bit of that blue in. So again, this is what it was before, then with levels, then with color balance. Makes a big difference. Now that I've adjusted the what I call the direct adjustments, I can now use my magic wand on the outside, or I can just use my lasso with my tablet, and I'm going to cut it out. Anything I think is useful. I can do this in chunks. It's going to be on the right layer. It can help to lock other layers so you don't as you've color corrected them, it might help to lock them so you don't accidentally cut away from them. And we're going to be using some new tools in order to get the effects we want. But all of these techniques are similar to what we did with our landscape. So I'm going to cut it out roughly. So this is not using any kind of feathering, right? But because it's a creature, it needs to be a little bit more precise, more surgical than when you were doing like landscape stuff, right? Like even this little gap in between his rows of teeth. This light coming through here and here. And so that's why I like to use middle gray as a background instead of pure white, because pure white can actually hide a lot of things. Some light leakage there. Now, in terms of zooming in, I try to never zoom in more than 200%. And that's so you don't just get obsessive and take way longer than you need to. So if you're zoomed in more than 200%, you're kind of wasting time. Because this is 200% of the size you are going to see the pixels in the print. So if it looks good at 200%, it will look good in the finished product. You don't need to get closer than that. And that's why resolution and dimensions of the project are so important. What is going on? What am I looking at here? That is interesting. Yeah, because I warped this reference. It's got kind of an interesting shape to it. It should be fun, fun to play with. And I can see the, the bird's beak behind it, right? And I want to decide what kind of bumps I want. I'm basically deciding how to cut my creature out right here. And then the back of the head. I want some of these scales, but not all of them. So I can decide which bumps to keep and where to include them. All right. Okay, now that I've done that, I can use magic wand to select all the empty space around that head. And then I can do select and mask just to feather it. And I'm just going to do it once. So I've selected and masked. And now I'm just going to hit delete once. And you're going to see how it softens it. Okay. Because I want these to be really sharp, that's all I'm going to do for now. 
Okay, now here is a 